tempted to uh, be out here in the elements today practicing? Uh, I think it was fun. You know, I uh, haven't practiced in the rain in a long time, so um, it was just football. You know, it felt like football. It felt like a, like a movie. You know, when you when you watch a movie and they practice outside in the rain and they're out having fun and things like that. So um, it's always good to practice in, in any kind of element you can when when you get the chance. Obviously, it's a physical challenge, but how much of a mental challenge is it as well? It's, uh, yeah, you just got to lock in every play. I mean, something that you want to do, no matter what the the elements are, you can't let those affect you know your everyday. Uh, style of play and just the things that you do on a football field, you have to lock in and, and just take every play, uh, play by play, and really dial in. Feels like communication's been good so far during the camp. How's it been, I guess, from your perspective and uh, being kind of new to the bunch? Has it been easy to get on the same page with some of these guys? Yeah, it's been fluent. You know, everybody has the same mental goal, and that's really to just be a better version of themselves every day. Um, and we're reaching the same goal as the defense. We want to be number one in every category that we possibly can. So. Um, we just do, do the little things every day, the small details that really uh, add up to, to, to the final goal. How do you like what you guys are doing in the meeting rooms to make sure that, that communication is consistent, clear, and concise? Yeah, we communicate. Um, Coach Harris, Coach Book, Coach Shane, they do a good job of detailing and explaining everything. Um, and then as far as in, a, in the DB room, you know, we go through the plays, we go through scenarios, we go through situations. Um, and we just see how everybody sees it from their point of view. And um, we just try to be on the same page before we really come out here and execute it. What difficulties might Chris Moore present when you're lining up across from him? Uh, Chris is a good, really good football player. Um, he's got size, speed. Um, he attacks the ball very well. So um, every day is a battle with him and along with every other receiver. You know, we just want to make each other better at the end of the day. Um, if there are some things that he sees with me that I can do better, he's going to tell me. If there are some things that I can see um, from him that I think he should do better, then I'm going to tell him as well. So, you know, we're all one team. and We're just trying to uh, really get to that one, that one end goal and just make each other better. They're talented. You know, they go hard every play, uh, whether it's blocking, whether it's running a route. Um, they do the little details correct, so it's hard to get a jump on the things that they do. Um, but they're all smart, and they have a new uh, vet in there, a savvy vet, Hall of Fame guy. So um, just probably being able to pick his brain makes them um, way more attentive to just what's going on and the things that they can do. You competed against DeAndre a lot in the past, and, and how, how has that mutual respect kind of gone in those times yeah. or so? Yeah, I, I mean, I went against him a few times. Uh, I think, believe my rookie year, I went against him, and then last year I went against him. Um, but the mutual respect is always there. Um, I know he's a, a very, very good receiver, a very fierce competitor. Um, so it's just hard work, man. It's just competition. Uh, he's going to win some. I'm going to win some. But um, obviously I would want to win more than not. Um, but he's just getting me better. You know, he's making me a better corner, making me able to uh, really just guard, you know, everything that he has to give. And um, if I can do it, I'll be just fine. How those matchups go, you remember? As far as in the past, His I'm not really sure. I'm sure you you probably know. You can look up the stats. I don't really know off the top of my head. How, uh, how has maybe Mike Vrabel Titans training camp been compared to maybe uh, with the Bucks where you've been in the past? Um, I would say just, I guess, just emphasis on different things. Um, for me, uh, I've, I'm a vet now, so it's a little different. Certain special teams things I'm not really involved with. Um, so I go to the side uh, with Coach Harrison, get better and do little small details in that regard. Um, but I would say it's the same. It's, it's very intense. It's hard work. Um, you got to be dedicated to want to play this game. You got to have fun with it at the same time. So uh, there's no walking around. There's no moping around. There's always just high energy, high intensity, um, and balls to the wall play. How much production can you get out of those special teams periods when you're working on something? Yeah, I mean, I think um, whenever it's just if if it's a special team that I'm involved in, obviously I'm doing everything I can to help the team make them better. If it's something I'm not involved in, uh, we go to the side and we work on things that I can that I can do better, or we go over. Uh, certain techniques that we just put in, and um, whether it's footwork, whether it's top of the route stuff, um, whether it's route recognition, he's just always doing something to make sure that uh, my mind's always stimulating football. How much will camp change next week when there's an opponent to look forward to, even though it's just a preseason game and a lot of guys may not play a whole lot of snaps? Uh, just game planning, really. Um, I guess it wouldn't be game planning against each other as much as it would be to just game planning against another team. Um, and to get to fly around and, and just be on the same page and, and uh, be on the same little details, like I said earlier, and just really just being able to play football. I know in the past you got to play a lot of nickel. I've seen you do that as much here. Are you more comfortable playing on the outside? I would say I'm, I'm comfortable really anywhere. Um, but as far as just playing on the outside, I played there in college. You know, I, I am more familiar with, I guess, the techniques, the, the, the types of releases and the types of stems you get. Um, it's easier for me to be able to read a receiver there. Um, and the nickel's a hard job for anyone, really, but um, it's a little more detailed than 
at being on the outside. But I would say I can do both, but I prefer to be outside. Would you like to get some opportunities to play some? The if they need me to. If they need me to, I'll be willing, more than willing to go in and, uh, and do my job. Can you give Roger any advice about what to do in the spot? Yeah, I mean, I just try to help him out as far as, you know, he gets on himself a lot when he's getting into man-to-man -man certain things. And um, I just try to tell him to be more patient. You know, in a slot, you can't really dictate a receiver's route based off their release as much as you can on the outside. So you have to be more square. You have to be more patient. You have to have a little bit more. They have a little bit more timing. So you just got to be willing to sit in there. And your times uh, playing, playing corner, I'm sure Mike Evans has mm. talked a lot, but if you could recall, like, what receiver talked the most trash with you, what receiver talked the most trash? Uh, that's a great question. I really don't know. Um, honestly, I feel like there hasn't really been many times. Oh, you know what? I do know. Robbie Anderson. Robbie. Yeah, me and Robbie went at it a couple times. I think every time we played Carolina, we, we pretty much yapped it up. But it was all respect. You know, just getting better. But I'm obviously there's going to be a competitive force there. So you want to try to get an edge any way you can. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Enjoy a day like today, or obviously more of a challenge with the rain. How you kind of approach that when it's formed the whole practice? I mean, I, at this point in my career, it's just it's, it's another day of practice. You just gotta go out here as a receiver. You just gotta focus more on catching the ball, and that's it. I mean, it gives you a chance to to work on different things, like seeing what type of equipment you would use out there, whether you're using the rain gloves, no gloves, stuff like that. Um, it's something I've been doing my whole career, so it, it's it's just another day in the office for me. Uh, I feel like I pick up offenses real well. I've, I don't know. I've had a ton of offensive coordinators in my career, so I, I just I go out there and study and try to learn everything I can. Do you feel like you were able to play kind of fast right away and not have to think as much? Definitely. Just like I said, because I, I study hard. Uh, I study the whole concept. I try to learn everybody's job, everybody's position. and. Like you said, it allows you to play faster. When you don't have to think, that's this game. As, as I try to tell young guys that, like, if you can go out there and not think and just play full speed, you, you can be out there. And then what about getting opportunities as a gunner, you know, on special team? That's something that you I believe you did that in Baltimore. Oh, yeah, that, I mean, that, I always tell people that's how I made my career in the NFL was special teams and playing gunner. So if they have me out there, I'm going to be out there running because I, I love it. That's, that's one of my favorite things to do, for sure. Being an offensive guy, a lot of, a lot of guys don't love special teams mm -hmm. and all that goes in on that. What kind of caught your eye about it? Uh, so when I first got in the NFL, my, uh, my Gunners coach at the time, he showed me film of Matthew Slater and said, this guy has been in the league for X amount of years just playing Gunner. He doesn't play receiver or anything else. And I'm like, man, if, if that's how I get to stay in this league, I'm going to do it and I'm going to try to be my best at it because that's all I want to do is have an opportunity to be on the field every Sunday. You guys have another group to go into your first preseason game. How much are you going to start to look forward to that, you know, competing against another team and, you know, guys that aren't your teammates? Yeah, I mean, right now we're just trying to get each other better, so I don't look too far ahead, but, I mean, it's always nice to go against somebody else. You get tired of saying, seeing the same guys, same defense every week, so it's always nice to go out there and see a different defense and just work different techniques against somebody else. Chris, you've worked with multiple quarterbacks in your career. What's maybe unique about Brian? Oh, he's he's awesome. Uh, I feel like because he has so much experience as playing a receiver, he knows how we run routes, and he can go in there and be very detailed of like how he wants us to do a certain stick or how the coverage unfolds this way, how he wants us to break out flat or something, as opposed to, like somebody just telling you, "Oh, I want you in the spot." He has very detailed and clear instructions of where he wants us to be. So, it's, as a receiver, that's all you want to know: where do you want me to be so I can make a play for you. Uh, I don't think so. That, like I said, he's one of a kind. I, I love Ryan. His his ability to see like the whole defense, the whole field, and see it from our our perspective as well as his is definitely one of a kind. <laughs> yes. Good. Appreciate, Appreciate it. Thanks. It's, 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 it's always too early to talk about injuries. It is always. Listen, like we spent a lot of time together with these guys starting in April, uh, going all the way through. We take a quick break and then we spend a lot of time with them. We're, we're here for, you know, from early in the morning until, you know, six o'clock whenever they leave for dinner. So you're in meetings, you're on the field, you know how hard they work. And so you don't want to see any of them get injured at all. And, um, you know, part of that process is then just mentally trying to get them back 
and, and them not be frustrated um, because they know that they're missing important time. But uh, you, you can also stay up and then get healthy and then take advantage of the opportunity when you get back out there. Chris Hubbard been since he's been here, and maybe what's the competition like at right tackle now minus uh, minus one? Um, Chris has been great. Chris has been professional. He's been attentive. Um, again, not without mistake like everybody else, but it seems like he's put a lot of work into to figuring out what we want to try to do each and every day in the early installation. And you know, I think things will start to calm down, you know, going forward here um, when we move into next week, just because of. You know, we've gotten most of everything in, and, and so hopefully there'll be some more improvement. But I've liked everything that I've seen from him as far as his attitude and his professionalism. Overall philosophy, when you've got a, a new group that has a lot of meshing and gelling to do, how, how important is, is preseason play against a, another team? I think, it's impo I, I think it's important. I think it's important um, based on where you're at. I think trying to evaluate and see see where they are and everybody is going into next week before the preseason game and then and then making a decision uh, about that and how much, how little, and to the extent that you want to evaluate people and competitions and you know, so I do think that it's important. How does Peter's strength translate when you plop him on this field against Tart and Autry? I, I think it's actually you know I mean I think it's been kind of what we thought you know I think that that's. His play strength, his core strength, his, his balance in there. I mean, he's, he's some pretty significant players that he's, you know, wrestling with. And so I think that'll be um, really good work. And those guys have been going hard. They've been trying to take care of each other. You know, and so that's – those are valuable reps. You know, that you can't recreate those. I mean, maybe not even in the game. So I, I really um, – Think that those guys are all working together and trying to turn, trying to push each other. Is it up on alignment? It is rookie season because he goes, he's doing combine training and all that. He doesn't have like the same off season of lifting work that he has in a normal off season. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what Peter did. I mean, so you know, again, we we get him when we get him and we evaluate him and then try to get a plan for him and and get them ready. And we do think lifting is, is certainly at this point in time a, a, an opportunity for recovery. Maybe not uh, strength gains, but just trying not to lose anything. In the past, you carried a fullback on the roster, at least in the camp and for part of the regular season. Was it the change in the offense or a change in the – just in They're the, hard to in find. The, in the thought. They're hard to find. So hopefully you can find some tight ends that can do some of that work and, um, you know, but – you know, nobody's playing. I mean, they're just not coming out of college. And again, if we felt like there was somebody out there that, you know, could help us, maybe we would consider it. But, you know, starting to find some of these tight ends that, that can do some of that work for, you know, the, the handful of plays that you have in there. How do you that receiver rotation? How do you see some of the, the younger guys like maybe Kiaris Jackson, Reggie Robertson uh, starting to emerge? Well, Reggie's made some plays down the field. I mean, we failed to cover him a couple times the other day, but when given the opportunity, he's he's um, he showed up. You know, we, we had some footballs, and again, this is good work today. It's, it's probably not our best day offensively because you know the the rain, and that that's obviously an excuse. But there were, I thought the quarterbacks handled it fairly well. Uh, we saw a lot of footballs that that got through got through us and got onto our shoulder pads, and those balls are going to be intercepted, but. Um, you know, mentioned earlier in camp, I thought Kyrus came back moving better than, than where he was, you know, once we had him in May. And so that was always a good sign. And you know, these, these preseason games are critical for, for some of these receivers, young receivers, all the way down. So we'll, we'll keep working with them. Sorry. I, I, how do you think overall your team handled practicing today out the uh, I thought they handled it okay. I don't think the execution was – was great. I thought that you know there were some good plays. I thought we missed a couple. We made made a few. Um, you know, d defensively, you know, just some of the the short yarded situations or you know, but but again, I, I thought they worked well. I thought we tried to stay up. It was good. You can't recreate this with with rain throughout a course of a practice. We've played numerous games where it was like that and. So the operation from the quarterback center exchange, the shotgun, we didn't have them 
you know, flying over everywhere, but it, it could have been cleaner and we need to be able to, to make some plays down the field, e even in these conditions. Mike, the decision on Jamarco is as simple as him doing some things outside of what you're looking for in, in practice? Yeah, I, I think I'm going to leave it at this, that we all have a responsibility to the team. I think my job is to protect the team. I think the player's job is to, to find a way uh, onto that team. And so we, we always are going to hold the team in high regard and, and make sure that everything we do uh, and how we carry ourselves is in the best interest of the team. Is it hard with Jamarco since you've known him since he was in high school? Um, protecting the team isn't hard, no. Mike, how would you evaluate Andre Dillard's progress to this point and how have you seen him make the team coach? And yeah, he, he's a very coachable player. I mean, he, I go in there in the morning just to check in with Haas, and he's in there before the meetings just getting – early jump on the installation. Those are things that he likes um, to do, to, to be able to you know, make sure that he's sound on whatever installation they put in the night before. Uh, and, and I think he has improved. I, th I think every day that he's out there, uh, he's gotten better. Um, so we'll just keep working and keep going. But I, 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 he's out there every single day and uh, trying to get in con condition and, and up to the, the standards in, in which we've set. Uh, you know, about effort and about finish and, you know, and then again, all the tech athletically, he's got all the skills and then now just making sure that, you know, he continues to progress each and every day. My Hall of Fame weekend is this weekend, but as a guy who's played in the NFL and now coaching the NFL, how much does the Hall of Fame matter to you? Well, I mean, I think it's the, the best of the best. I know it's the best of the best, um, but I've never thought, you know, too much about it. I mean, I used to go to those breakfasts when I was a kid. My dad and I would be lucky to get a couple tickets or, you know, go down there and be around those great players um, when I was a kid growing up. I mean, I grew up 20 minutes from, from the Hall of Fame. So when you have an opportunity to play in this league and coach in this league, um, you realize that you go back, and I played with a lot of those guys that are in it. And, and played on the field with some of those coaches that are in it, so, and the contributors. And so I don't take that for granted at all. Mike, what have you made of Alize and Max camp so far? Mm, I, th I think it's been good. I think it's been sometimes up. And I think as a new installation, you see when he has a comfort level, I see a player that can play fast and has good skill set and good size. And then just making sure now that um, – you know, we're able to get stay on top of things. And, and again, play uh, that fullback role, play on the line of scrimmage, play off the ball, um, you know, moving those guys around. So the more that he can stay on top of some of that stuff and play fast, um, you know, that, that's going to help him. In camp, you discussed a couple guys that were contenders out at right tackle, but then run skill and maybe some other guys as like second options that weren't in that first group. At what point in camp is it too late to reshuffle the deck if you feel like it's necessary, and are you already at that point? What point? Where you wouldn't want to shuffle, reshuffle the deck if you felt like a move was necessary. Well, I, I think that that could go on. You know, we would we would still have time. I don't think we're we're past that. I don't think we're at that point right now. But you know, we'll we'll keep evaluating, and you know, I'm sure we'll bring some guys in here to work out and. And keep moving guys around and see and see what gels and what and what works. Well, I mean, I think him and Lamar Hunt, you know, visionaries of you know, our league and what became the, the Super Bowl, one of the, you know, the, the greatest sporting event, single sporting event, you know, in the world is based on how many people watch it and, and, and cover it. Um, but, but I also look at the way that, you know, our organization is run and, and, and what Amy, you know, learned from him uh, and Kenneth and Barkley. And so that, I appreciate that. You know, I appreciate uh, how they, they operate and run the team. Um, but I don't know what goes into the selection process. I don't know the, the criteria, and I don't know what puts 
some players and coaches and contributors over the edge and what what doesn't. So I know that it's a, it's an unbelievable honor, the, the highest honor that you can get in our game. And, and hopefully um, very soon that Mr. Adams uh, can, can, can you know, be celebrated. Playing linebacker, communicating, getting lined up, tackling, playing fast, all the things that he's doing in practice. And, you know, we've got guys competing, and that's what we're trying to do. It seems engaged. I mean, Monty's been a, you know, a, a very good special teams player for us here and you know, finished the season last year playing with some speed. And, again, we just want to make sure that um, there's competition at each spot. Monty's – Doing that in these preseason games will be critical for him and, you know, being able to uh, understand everything that we're, we're asking him to do. But no, I mean, Ed, Monty's attitude has been great. He's been working hard and, you know. I, I cannot wait to watch OTIS in a preseason game and playing fast. And when he knows, you know, I mean, when he triggers, he triggered yesterday in the bubble and, um, came through, uh, there was a, there's a level of play speed that when he is sure of where he's going um, is pretty cool. So, you know, excited for, for him to, to be able to go out there and, and play fast and see where he can find a, you know, a role on special teams and watch him cover some kicks and, and watch him play on a punt return and, you know, all those good things.